Hi, I'm Mike Downing from Downing Drums, and this is our Tech Talk. And what we'd like to go over to you uh, at this point is the only truly free-floating drums that is built by my company. Uh, let's start off by all getting on the same page, and that page would be start by talking on what is a free-floating drum. A free-floating drum is a drum that had to meet three requirements. The requirements that were involved was number one, that the shell of the drum was suspended between the upper and lower head only being held in place by its bearing edge in contact with those heads. This allowed the shell of the drum to resonate freely and would give you the best sound or the timbre of the shell. The second requirement was that nothing touched the shell. Nothing was attached to it, nothing penetrated it, uh, no mounting brackets went on to it, no lugs went on to it, nothing that would impede the resonance or that shell from resonating absolutely freely. That's the first two. The third one was the most difficult one. It was to have the ability to tune the upper and lower head to different degrees of rigidity. All right. Most drums, when they're tuned, they usually decay too flat. Uh, an example of the tom-tom, you would have the upper head a little bit more rigid than the lower head, so when you hit the drum, you would hear it decay to the flat of the note or the flat of the timber. A well-tuned drum can actually play a triad. A triad is a minor chord. It is usually with the fundamental and then the sharp of the fundamental on the top and the flat of the fundamental on the bottom. These are the three requirements that are necessary in order to make a true free-floating drum. To date, I am the only one who has built a true free-floating drum and hold a patent on it. Uh, I'd like to just go through briefly. I got a very, very important email from a gentleman, and he states that he has first-hand experience through daily playing and knows of the tremendous benefit of a resonating shell. The drums that he has are basically a single tension drum. Uh, he writes, uh, as a PhD in mechanical engineering, as well as a drummer, I have thought many times about how to create a free-floating system with independently adjustable heads and could not see how this could ever be possible without contact with the shell. Your system is truly ingenious. It is a stroke of genius. Congratulations on your beautiful design. So you may not have to be a rocket scientist to understand what we're doing, but when you get a compliment from a rocket scientist, that really works out pretty well. Alrighty, uh, what we should do is discuss what's been done to this period of time as far as drums go. Mind you, they're the oldest instrument in the world. They've been around since the third millennium. So it's really hard and really difficult to come up with anything new. So there are a lot of gimmicks that come up and there are a lot of statements that are made about a drum being a free-floating drum or other systems that we have. So I'm just going to pose a question to you which we'll ask, answer at the end of this segment and it's why are shells made out of plywood? And we'll answer that at the end of the segment. Okay, what I'd first like to do is show you probably the most popular free-floating drum. Mind you, we have to keep in mind those three requirements of a drum. All right, this is a beautiful instrument. And I just want to take a minute on it and show you. This is a free-floating drum, or it's marketed as a free-floating drum. Okay, so the first thing we have an upper and lower head. We have a shell that has to be free-floating. We also have to have the ability to tune in the upper and lower tension, tensions of the drum. And we also need nothing to touch the shell of the drum. Okay? So, it takes a minute to take this one apart, especially when you get a head start on it. And we're just going to briefly show you this drum. Heads off, got your rim, normal setup on it. We get to the shell of the drum. The shell of the drum 
lifts right out. Okay, but notice this. This is your bearing edge of the drum. This is supposed to be in contact with the upper head, and it is. This is an intermediate hoop, very, very similar to my design, but what they've done is they've knocked the intermediate hoop in a way that this shell sits right on top of it. So we really don't have a shell with a bearing edge that's touching the opposing head. The intermediate hoop is being used as the opposing head or the bearing edge. So therefore, the shell is not free floating. The intermediate hoop becomes an extension of the shell and they actually put a piece of felt all the way around the inside over here just to stop it from vibrating and rattling. But you can tune the upper and lower heads independently of each other, but it's basically not a free floating drum. What does it mean? Can you tune the upper and lower head independently? Yes, you can. Is the bearing edge of the shell touching the upper and lower head? That's the only thing holding it in place? No, it's not. So it's not a free floating drum. They might as well have just turned around and put lugs on the side of this, you know, to tension it up and it got basically the same result. It's a nice piccolo snare. It has good sound to it, but it does not meet the requirements. That's one kind of drum. Another kind of drum that they have is going to be one of my drums, but I'm going to use it for two demonstrations. In the email that I read to you, we were looking at an engineer, a PhD in mechanical engineering, saying nothing attaching to the shell, and that he played drums that a fully resonant shell. This was true, but they were called a single tension drum. If you took a drum and a shell and put a head on one side of it and a rim and used straight bars like this and a head and a rim on the other side, that shell is now free floating. So it meets one requirement. Nothing touches the shell. It meets the second requirement. It's only being held in place by its contact of the bearing edge to the upper and lower head. That's been taken care of. The problem with it is Whatever you tune as tension on one side of the drum, you will have on the other side of the drum. All right, so it's what they call a single tension drum. Now, mind you, what I read to you is he has experience with a fully resonate, resonating shell and was quite aware of the impact that the shell's resonation had on the sound of the drum and was very, very pleased with it. But he lacks the ability of tuning that drum to a triad or to a decay into flat. This is my drum, and to briefly go into it, I have an intermediate hoop, okay? I have a shell up ahead and rim, standard. This comes off a lot easier because I had a head start on it. And that's typical, nothing strange there. Here's the bearing edge of the shell. Now if you look carefully over here, I'm going to remove the shell from the drum. I did it on the other one too. But you see how the shell is extended? It doesn't fit on top of the intermediate hoop. I mean, they came very close. They just didn't hit the bullseye. Fits on top all over theirs. Mine actually fits completely into the drum and makes contact with the head on the other side. All right, now how does that work? How, how does that make a difference in it? Well, it meets the requirement of the shell being suspended by its bearing edge on the upper and lower head, number one. Number two, Nothing is touching the shell at all, otherwise I would not be able to remove it. And number three is that you can tune the upper and lower head to different degrees of tension. So I'm going to quickly put this together and tune the drum and then we'll move on.